Okay, so here is the Rode Go wireless mic system. A lot of parts. The first one, first item of this kit is the Rode Go transmitter. It's got a built-in microphone as well as a 3.5 millimeter port into which you could plug uh, a lapel mic, also known as a lavalier mic. Item two is the receiver that is paired with the transmitter. So the way wireless microphone systems work is that you have a transmitter that receives physical input, that is to say sound waves, and it converts those sound waves into electronic signals. And then the transmitter, as the name implies, it transmits those electronic signals to a receiver. And then as its name implies, it receives those electronic signals and it um, sends those signals to a recording device. So this receiver would have to be connected to a recorder of some kind, like a computer or a camera or a handheld or portable recorder. Item three is the carrying pouch for the receiver and transmitter. Item four are two USB cables. They each have a USB-C end and a USB-A end. These cables are for charging the receiver and transmitter. Item five is the black-to-black -black audio cable. More specifically, these plugs are known as TRS plugs. TRS stands for tip ring sleeve. So here's the tip. Here's the ring in between the two dark bands, and the sleeve is the bottom part of the plug. These plugs transmit audio signals in one direction only. And then item six of the kit is this black-gray audio cable. So this is a TRS, TRS plug, and the gray end is a TRRS plug. So it's got a tip, two rings in between three dark bands, and then there's a sleeve at the end. So again, these dark bands are not the rings themselves. They're the, the boundaries of the rings. And TRRS plugs send audio signals in two directions. Okay, and item seven is a USB adapter. You would use this cable with, to record to a computer in conjunction with the black gray cable. Item eight is the Apple lightning adapter. Again, you would use this lightning adapter in conjunction with the black gray cable. The gray end would go into the lightning adapter and the black end would go into the receiver. Item nine is the splitter cable. To be honest, it can be tricky to use, but in theory, this would, cable would allow you to record and listen um, from the same device, same recording device. Number 10 is the fur windshield. This, you pull it back and then put it onto the transmitter. You'll notice um, around the built-in mic there are two notches into which you can insert the uh, protrusions from the fur windshield. So it's good to push one, pull back the fur, insert one part in and then the other, and press firmly down. And in theory, you should be able to hold it. It can be tricky and then you really only use this if you were recording outdoors. There we go. And then next to the windshield we've got the manufacturer's quick start guide right here. And then number 12 is the plastic container. And then these velcro straps just go on the cables. Okay so again to reiterate Depending on which recording device you use, you would use either one of these two cables. If you're recording to a camera, for example, that is most likely to have a dedicated input port, a 3.5 millimeter port, then you would use the black black cable. Now, if you're gonna use a recording device that has a 3.5 millimeter port, but that is probably not intended for input and is probably intended for output, then you would use the black gray cable. Again, you would insert the black, the black end always into the receiver, and then the gray cable would go either into 
the end of the USB adapter if you're recording to a computer, or it would go into the plug, the female side of the lightning adapter if you're recording to an iOS device. Regardless, you want to turn on the transmitter. The power button is on the bottom, so press and hold. And then the second light will be solid, and the first light will blink if it's not paired with the receiver. So to turn on the receiver, press the power button on its top. And then the display will appear. And then the two indicator lights from the, the transmitter will be solid. You can see on the display there's RX and TX. RX is a universal abbreviation for a receiver. That's this device. And then TX is a universal abbreviation for a transmitter, which is this device. Okay. And on the bottom here is DB. So that's a gain. So gain is change to volume, not volume itself. It's a, it's a boost, positive or decreased boost. So as I'm speaking here, I'm holding up to my mic. You can see the, you uh, should be able to see the volume meter max out. If it gets to the end, the edge, and it's red, that means it's, it's speaking too loud. Either too loud or the mic is too close or some combination of the two. So what you want to do is you want to place the transmitter uh, maybe two-fifths away from the person's mouth. So they could clip it onto their collar or their breast pocket. Um, and if they have a naturally lower voice, quieter voice, you can toggle between three uh, gain levels, low, medium, or high. So what I recommend is place the transmitter on the person of your subject, of the subject. Get them to recite the alphabet and then just pay attention to the peak of the volume meter. If it's, if it's too high, then you can reduce the gain as needed by pressing the DB button. And likewise, if it's too soft, you can boost it as needed. The ideal, you want the volume meter to stay in the green, not, not get into the yellow or the right or the red to the right end. And that's really the road go in a nutshell. Now you can, for example, like I mentioned, um, you can actually use it in conjunction with the camera. This belt clip here would go into the shoot mount of the camera. You could also connect this receiver to a portal recorder like the Zoom H4n, but I'll save that demonstration for another video. And that's the Road Go wireless mic system.